So as you can see that, you know, I set up uh, uh, my computer here. I set up the whiteboard here. Hopefully it's going to be better for you guys to visualize the lecture. Um, so uh, last class actually we started to cover chapter 10. Okay, so I kind of want to go over what we covered last class very quickly and then we're going to go to today's um, lesson. So this chapter, you know, I'm going to continue to cover this chapter uh, for today's lesson and next Tuesday lesson as well as after the break when we come back, we have one more class to cover uh, this chapter. So last class I mentioned uh, several important things. I kind of want to go over the concept again. The first thing I covered was parallax. So we can use parallax to calculate the distance of a star if we know the parallax of the star. But when you use this equation, you have to pay attention to that, the fact that the distance has to be in the unit of parseconds and the parallax needs to be in the unit of arc seconds in order to do the calculation. The second thing, the most important thing we covered was um, uh, luminosity, apparent brightness. This is one of the most important concepts in this chapter. Okay, so we want to know how bright a star is. Okay, so then there are two ways we can describe it. The first thing is called luminosity or absolute brightness. It tells you how much the actual, what is the amount of actual light a star emits. The other thing is apparent magnitude is how bright a star appears to us when we view from the Earth point of view. Okay, um, those are two very different concepts. So in astronomy, we actually use, okay, so numbers to represent uh, those two types of magnitudes. So here, this shows you the apparent, apparent magnitude for the, for the sun actually is negative 26.7. And then, so the more, the smaller the number, the brighter uh, the object is. So that's the way how astronomers represents the apparent brightness of a star. So in today's lesson, I'm going to uh, just go over, you know, the next feature we want to know about the star besides the brightness, we want to know the temperature of a star, okay? So how the temperature is related to the color of a star, okay? So the, usually the color of a star is indication of its temperature, okay? When the red stars, you know, when we see red stars, actually usually they, they mean they're much cooler stars and blue stars are much hotter stars. If you look at Orion Nebula here, you can see, okay, there are a lot of blue stars there. That means, you know, remember we talk about Orion Nebula. Orion Nebula is the nursery of the new baby, new, newborn baby stars, okay? The baby stars, they are young stars, okay? They're very energetic, so they're, they're much hotter stars. On the other hand, if you see this, there are a lot of red stars. They're much cooler, they're much older, so, in the future, when we talk about life cycle of a star, we're going to make some connections there. There are two ways we can find out uh, the temperature of a star. One way is we can use the back body radiation we talk about from the chapter when we talk about the light properties as electromagnetic radiation. Um, so as you can see, I'm going to go over very quickly because I'm going to leave this to next class. Okay, and next class I'm going to go over this again in details, and then I'm going to ask you to do an exercise, you know, tutorial exercise related to the black body radiation, how we can use black body radiation to figure out the temperature of a star, and then to figure out the color of a star. So as you can see, the black body radiation has this kind of curve. I don't know if you guys still remember what I showed you before. The y-axis is the intensity of a of the uh, of the light the x axis is the frequency of the light okay so as you can see here uh the intensity of the light actually uh is uh related to temperature of the star so this is 3000 kelvin 10000 kelvin 30000 kelvin as you can see the temperature is higher the 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 height of the 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 the, the graph actually is moving uh to the more intensity uh, direction. On the other hand, if you look at where the peak happens at certain frequency or wavelength, and then it's gonna tell you roughly, you know, the color of a star. So uh, again, as I said, I'm going to leave this to next class and we'll come back to this uh, again. 
Another way we can decide the temperature of a star is called the stellar spectra. Okay, the, this method actually is more informative than the black body curves. Okay, there are seven general categories of stellar spectra. Okay, and then we can use those categories to represent the different temperatures. And these categories are from O to M. Okay, so you need to remember the sequence. Okay, so O represents the hottest star and M represents the coolest star. And you need to memorize the sequence. Okay, so how to memorize it? You can, you can create your own sentence to memorize the sequence. So this is an example here. So you can say, oh, be a fine girl or guy and kiss me. So that's the way how you can remember the sequence. And these seven letters actually are, re are representing seven different spectral types. Okay, so you can see O type is about 30,000 Kelvin, okay. And then, as you can see, you know, the hotter temperature, as I said, they're younger, younger stars, younger stars, they have a lot of hydrogen atoms here inside. And then, uh, as the, uh, the, the life of the star, of a star evolves, actually, you can see more, more um, complex atoms appear in the spectrum. So that means nuclear fusion is happening inside the stars, okay. Um, and these spectral types have very, very different absorption lines. So that's how we can distinguish those spectral classes uh, <clears throat> to represent different temperatures. Okay. Uh, the other topic I want to mention today is stellar sizes. Okay. Uh, we have, sometimes we can see in the sky, actually, in, uh, some stars are very large, some stars are very small, and sometimes, sometimes some stars are middle-sized um, uh, stars, okay? But how the star size is affecting uh, the luminosity of a, of a star, here is the equation here, okay? So the luminosity of the star actually depends on, not only on the temperature, of a star, but also related to the radius of a star, okay? So you don't have to know how to do the calculation for this equation, but you need to understand how the luminosity depends on the radius, so we call size of a star, and also depends on the temperature of a star. So there are different kinds of categories for the sizes of stars. Uh, we have giant stars, we have dwarf stars, and supergiant stars. Um, and those stars also, they are related to um, uh, the, uh, you know, the luminosity of, uh, of, the, um, of the star, okay. So, and as you can see here, okay, the, the, the star size, they're very different, they're very differently. So we can see the sun actually is very, you know, all the stars here, you see are, So the, it, this indicates sun, okay? So that's it, that means the, the radius of the sun. So you can see the radius of the sun is about, is one, let's say, the Jupiter is 0.1, okay? And then, and you can see the Capella is 15 times of the size of the sun, okay? So in fact, as later on, I can show you sun actually is a very ordinary stars in terms of the sizes, in terms of the brightness, um, among so many stars we are going to categorize later using HR uh, diagram. So what I'm going to ask you guys to do today is I want you to uh, work on the worksheet I post on the blackboard uh, named by luminosity, temperature, and sizes. Okay, so this is going to be, this is the uh, the, uh, the exercise sheet I'm going to ask you to do and then you can do only part one so from question one all the way through question nine so you don't have to do the, the part two at all for this um, tutorial exercise okay that's it that's it for today